Hello everyone, and right now what we're going to be doing is just continuing from where we left off in the last video. And in the last video, what we had done was we had rendered a scene in Daz Studio. This is the scene. And then we used Motion Master to create some images that we can use to composite a motion blur effect. So we're going to use these additional images that we rendered with Motion Master to add a motion blur to our image here. And in order to do that, we're going to be using a 2D photo editing application. I'm going to be using the GIMP, but you can use whatever application you prefer to use, whether it's Photoshop, Paint.net is another one that you can use for compositing. But again, I'm going to be using the GIMP, and this is very easy to do. And this is not an exact science. You have a lot of options here. I'm just going to give you some general ideas to get you started. And I'm just going to start by dragging, and this is my output folder that contains all the images that I want to use. And I'm going to drag this onto the GIMP image preview window. And now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to bring into focus my layers window by pressing control L. So this is my layers window. And then I'm going to start by showing you how to create a very quick composite. And we're just going to drag that motion layer onto here, just so you know. That is the motion layer. And we're going to be just dragging that onto our layers right there. Now I have my motion layer on top. I have my final render here in the background. From here, I can simply use this drop down menu and choose screen. And there we have a composite. And in this case, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, if you're okay with that, you can use this as your final render. Now, I th don't think it looks too bad. I don't think it really needs too much more than that. And we do have the mask layers, but you don't necessarily need to use the mask layers if you don't want to. But the mask layers do give you more control. And I'm going to show you how to create a mask within the GIMP. Okay, I'm going to show you how to utilize those layers. So, I mean, that's one way you can create a composite. And you have a lot of options here. You can try different blend modes, something that works well, light and only, might work pretty well for you. You get a more intense effect here. If you take a look, this is a pretty intense effect. So you have all these different options here. There's addition, which is another one that gives you a pretty intense effect. It's really up to you. I'm going to leave it on screen for now. If we take a look here, one thing we have going on is that maybe you don't want the motion blur coming up so much in the foreground right up here. One way I can take care of that is I can duplicate my final render here and I can bring this to the top. Now I can hide these, so i just hidden these two bottom layers. And in my top layer, one thing I can do is I can create a mask for this. Now in order to do that, what I want to do is drag my DynaGirl mask right here onto my layers. And just let me show you what that is. And there's the DynaGirl mask. So we're going to be masking our character. And here is that layer, the mask layer. And in order to create a mask for the top layer, I'm going to just select the mask layer. I'm going to hit Control A to select everything. And then I'm going to hit Control X to cut everything. From here, I can simply right click and delete that layer. I don't need it any longer. And in my top layer, I can right click. Now I know you're not going to be able to see this here, but what I'm going to do is go up here and choose add layer mask. So that's a, well, let me see if I can just get that in the screen so you can see that menu. Right click here, add layer mask. Now I have an options window. You have some options you can choose from. Either one of these two options is going to be fine. Either white full opacity or black full transparency, whatever you prefer. And I'm going to click add. And now I have an option to select either the image itself or its mask layer. I'm going to make sure that the mask layer is selected. And then I'm going to just do a control V to paste the mask. And then now we have our character masked off. And then I can come in here and turn on these other modes here. And now what we have, right, we have our character here and then we have our motion blur coming up, but notice that we don't have the motion blur covering up the foreground of our character anymore. Now, if you want that 
just to show up a little bit, you can turn down the opacity. Notice if I turn the opacity all the way down, we'll have what we started off with. But we can set the opacity maybe to 50% just to soften that motion blur effect if we want to. In addition to that, if you want to get creative, you can also apply a mask to your motion blur layer itself. Now, right here I have a floating, and I do want to mention this because some of you that use Photoshop, if you decide to use the GIMP, right here I have something called a floating selection layer. To anchor that, I'm just going to have to click this option down here. This is just something the GIMP does whenever you copy and paste something. But right here, we can even add a mask to our motion layer the same way. And again, it's all there just to give you some extra control. And before I end this video, one thing I do want to mention is, again, this isn't an exact science. You have a lot of options here. And you can experiment with different blend modes. You can try different things to get different kinds of effects. Now, in this case, with having that mask layer on top, using the light and only mode right here doesn't look too bad. We can use that and that gives us a more intense effect. Whereas before, without that mask layer on top, you can see that effect was just a bit too intense. And even down here, we can use light and only and if that's still too intense for you, you can always adjust the opacity a little bit. So there's actually several ways to achieve our composite here. And it's all up to you. Just get creative and determine how you want to composite your image. So with that, I'm just going to end this video.